Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike with SmartOptionTrading.com. This is our weekly recap video. This goes out to all my subscribers as well as everybody on my email list and who follows me on YouTube. If you're interested in learning more about me, you can come over and visit me at SmartOptionTrading.com. So let's talk about this week and the week that was. Uh, it was not the easiest of weeks to navigate. And it, what I mean by that is sometimes you come in, the weeks are easy. But this week was, you know, very funky. We closed dead near on the lows on Friday, down next to the 50-day. And then we gapped up on Monday. We trapped all the shorts. We failed at the 8 and the 21 day, saying, okay, this still feels weak, like we're going to roll over. Then we got that big gap above it on Tuesday, pushed up, gapped again on Wednesday, gapped again yesterday. And today we gapped down. So it's been a very futures-driven market so far. Um, in this market. Volume has been okay. And, you know, today's weakness was desperately needed, right? So to help to cool this market off a little bit, it was getting extended back at a new all-time high here. And I kind of feel like next week's going to be the big week where we really find out how big this coronavirus will be or will not be. Because if it's going to spread like mad, it's going to start next week. China's going to reopen their, a lot of their manufacturing centers. These cruise ships that are in will be coming in and out. Uh, we get China data so that will tell us how much this is affecting this, them and global economy. So I think there's just something to keep an eye on here. Uh, the market did a lot of rotation around, but overall, the market put a new all-time high and pushed up. From a perspective on going forward, you know, for me, I'm looking at a lot of, of the names that are hit by China for when this is over. And those are some of the names we've talked about and a lot, like, you know, Carnival Cruise Line. Who'd want to get on a cruise ship here right now with what's going on? But at some point, this is going to come back into play. Same thing with a name like Starbucks, which has been beaten up here. So some ideas I've gone over at my subscribers that you guys can listen to as well. We did a whole list of them that, if, um, you know, if you're a sub, you get to see that. For me this week, I traded uh, in and out of names, a lot of different names with stock and, um, and options. I traded Amazon three times this week. Uh, today was the day it finally went. I've been trading with spreads, which has allowed me to stay in it longer and, you know, worked really nicely. You know, the first time made nice money. The second time gave a little of my profit back and today made more nice money. And you can see here this nice move to break out and then back in. Just tough. Uh, I don't know why they're not letting Amazon go, but, you know, right now they don't want to. But this name will be on my radar for next week because that earnings report was special and should be watched. Twitter gave a fabulous, fabulous week on that earnings report yesterday. Great money in that one. And well, one of the reasons why I didn't add long options on it or buy more of it back was because I told my subs it has this bad tendency to do this. If you look at previous big runs, it gets a big day like this. It tends to come in. And what did it do? It gapped down and gave it inside day. It probably does this for another day or two and then may likely go. Now, do I think Twitter's going back to its all-time, not its all-time high, its range high of 45 up here, 47? I don't know. That report was good. Is it good enough for that? I'm not sure. But definitely enough to watch. Square. Square has been a beautiful name. Uh, I've been trading this, traded this eight days in a row before um, this was the last day I got out. So I traded this eight days in a row with stock. So, and then on this day, I sold the position I opened up from back around 68 up in the 80s. And I haven't touched it the last couple of days because the name's saying it needs to cool off. That said, after that big run's come in and cooled off, this one still looks good. Microsoft's been a monster this week. Just another move to all-time highs. This thing has gone absolutely ballistic and vertical. We haven't seen a move like this in this name forever. Apple's finally cooling its jets, another name that is kind of being affected by what's going on in China. Everybody's worried about their production supplies. Facebook's got to be watched carefully next week. It pushed back to the gap, failed right there at the 21 day today. So definitely something I'd want to keep my eye on closely as it moves up um, with that. NVIDIA has earnings next week. That will be big for, the, uh, for itself and the other semis. Continue to keep an eye on Intel here, which after a nice earnings report is going sideways. What are some of the, the other names, guys, we played? I got to just kind of thinking to myself here as we're looking at stuff. Boeing provided trades. I traded it once. Some other people played it multiple times, gave a nice two-day move on that one. Zoom gave us a nice move. It was a great one-day trade, a day and a half trade before it came in. Now it's just quietly rebuilding down here. We're keeping an eye on this one as it moves forward. And, uh, you know, you can just see some of the different things that are going on in here. And Netflix provided trades this week. That was another, another nice trader. So is Google. Netflix kind of stuck here, but holding up. Google also continues to come in off of earnings. Earnings weakness was pretty much bought back. 
you know, moving forward next week, I want to keep an eye on Uber. Um, today I traded it briefly, got in and out, didn't decide not to stick with it because I don't trust the name. But, you know, very, very interesting action here today. This name has a lot of shorts it can squeeze. Same thing with pins. These names could possibly squeeze, although pins action today was not good at all. You see that big red candle uh, where it just came coming, kept coming back in. From an option flow perspective, you know, they, they came after work hard early this week. They came after the April 21 calls. They got that upgrade. You got that big move. They sold most of them. They came after the Netflix February 400 calls a couple days ago. They've been dumping them this afternoon here. Uh, Boeing got a lot of call flow into the March 70s. That's uh, 370s, and they, I would keep an eye on that because if this name decides to go, I think that's a pretty good one to keep your eye on there as well. But outside of, oh, and then there was Gilead. This is a name I don't trust, but Gilead got a tremendous amount of flow into it. The May 80s were the big ones. Popped up big yesterday, gave some follow through today this morning. There was a rumor out that they have a cure for the coronavirus that China wants to buy them. China's not buying Gilead, guys. I mean, that's never going to happen. That's just one of those rumors you kind of have to have to forget about. Uh, another one today, who, who was it? Kraft Heinz. Somebody put out a rumor that um, they're, you know, they're, they're talking to somebody about being bought. I want you guys to think carefully about this. Warren Buffett bought the, his company up into the highs, 50% of it. Do you think he's going to sell this for 35 to 40 bucks a share? So, you know, they're not for sale unless he's buying the other half back up, which he might, but you almost never hear rumors of his deals. In fact, none of the deals ever gone through we've heard a rumor of. So this is what I talk about sometimes with people about common sense. Common sense says, you know, he's not going to sell this down here. They have earnings next week. I like this name if their earnings are good. So bottom line, I hope everybody had a great week. I'll post charts on Sunday, full week next week. We'll see where we go from here. Everybody have a fabulous weekend and thanks for listening.